is a little introduction to the idea of a differential equation, which is our last topic for AB Calculus. And I want to look at a, an example, and this is going to lead to uh, easily the most important differential equation, and um, one of the easiest to understand and solve as well. I want to look at a population of a town. Um, Uh, let's get, let's say, uh, Springfield. Let's say Springfield. It's known that the um, population, it's a function of t, p of t. It's growing. And here's what's known about it, that um, it's growing at 2% per year. So that's a rate of growth, but um, it's not... We have to think about it a little bit to figure out exactly what does that mean, 2% per year. So let's look at a situation. Suppose that I know Suppose I look at the population at some point, and I know that the population is 100,000 at some given time. Then I'd like to know how fast that's growing, not as a percentage, but in terms of how many people per year, additionally, are living in, in Springfield. Well, I just have to take that 2% and multiply it by P. So. This is something we talked about a, a little bit a while ago, quite a while ago. The relative rate of growth is 2%. That's as a proportion of the population. The absolute rate of growth is then 2% times 100,000 people. 2% 2 of 100 is 2, and so that's 2,000 people, and that's per year. Oh, I should put in the per year here. So 2,000 people per year. Well, that's a, the kind of re growth rate we're a little bit more familiar with. That should say that the rate of change of the population with respect to time is 2,000 people per year. And in general, we can <coughs> we can say that if we take that 2% and multiply it by whatever the population is, we're going to get the growth rate in terms of a derivative. So just one more quick example. Suppose later, much later, let's say P is 500,000 people, but we still have that 2% relative rate of growth. then dp dt is going to be that 2% times 500,000 people. So you wait a year, and if that 2% figure is still accurate, let's say that's a constant. So it's a constant relative rate of growth. The relative rate of growth is assumed to be a fixed number in this example. Um, that if you take 2% of 500,000 people, that should be the how fast the population is increasing in terms of an absolute number of people. Well, let's see, that's going to be 10,000 people per year. Let's see if that's a decent assumption. Um, it's actually a fairly good baseline assumption. It's not, uh, it's, a little, it's way too simple for a real model, but it's a good place to start. Populations often grow at a rate that is proportional to the actual population. Suppose that this is this population is not affected by immigration or emigration, people coming in and out. But suppose it's just people having babies. Well, if there's 100,000 people, there's 100,000 people who could be having babies, and so there's going to be that many people who could have kids, and maybe 2% of those at each year have a kid to produce 2,000 people. Well, at the same rate of fertility, 
if you've got five times as many people, you're not going to expect the same number of babies. You're not going to expect just 2,000 babies. You're going to expect 10,000 babies, five times as many babies. And so on a baseline, simple assumption, this is a more reasonable m model of population than just, say, adding the same number of people per year. So let me make that contrast. Linear growth is where the absolute rate of change is a constant. That's just how many more people do you see in, in the town every year. And that's not actually a, a model that, that fits populations as well in a lot of cases. And we're going to have, I'm going to put a little mystery thing here. It's another type of growth where it's not DPDT that's constant. It's you take DPDT, like this 10,000 people or the 2,000 people, and you express that as a rate. You divide it by P. And that's the relative rate of, of change. And we talked about that. We did a uh, worksheet about that, especially as it related to the chain rule, or the product and quotient rules, rather, um, a long time ago. But this is a really useful number. And in this case, that was 2%, or 0 0.02 in our example. Okay, and uh, I want to fill in that blank in a minute, but let's see if we put that, if we just put the derivative on one side. This says dpdt is 0 0.02 times p. So that's the kind of equation we're going to be looking at, or one of the kinds of, of equations. In general, if I have some number k, some constant number, this is the equation that expresses a constant relative rate of change. And it's growth. Dp d dt is positive with p positive. It's growth if k is positive. And it's decay, like people are fleeing if k is negative. And that's a very common situation. There's a lot of things that decay in this way as well. Well, let's see if we can figure out what the solution to this might be. I'm not going to do the 0 0.02 quite yet. Let's, let's do something we do a lot of the time, which is just switch to a simpler case. What if k was equal to 1? Hmm, have we ever seen a function that's its own derivative? Mathematically, this is an extremely elegant and natural thing to look for as soon as you know about derivatives. Is there a function that is its own derivative? Well, we're lucky that we saw this function even before we had calculus. And in fact, p of t equals e to the t works. And then the question is, and one question that we need to address are there any more? And I think I'll save that for a different video because I want to get I want to at least get to this this version of the story. Um, there's not that many more, and we'll be able to find them. But okay, what about dp dt equals? And let's not go to the 0 0.02 yet quite. Let's say 3p. So I've, if I have we ever seen a function that um, whose derivative is three times itself? Well just because I only have uh, 60 seconds left, uh, you might want to pause the video and actually think about this. You, you, it's, it's not incredibly hard to guess. Let me give you the common wrong guess. 3 e to the t. If e to the t worked for a dp, dp, dp dt as itself, what about 3 e to the t? Well, that doesn't work. And in fact, it's actually the answer to the other question. This actually is still itself. The 3 comes along for the ride, so that means this is actually yet another function whose derivative is itself. It's not 3 times itself. But what if we had p of t equals, pause the video now, unless you want it to be given away. OK, you're back now. What if you had e to the 3t? The chain rule says the derivative of that is itself, but then times the derivative of 3t, which is 3. And that, voila, that's 3 times what we started with. And so that says 
that e to the kt is going to be what we're looking for. And exponential growth is the answer to that blank I left before.